Hello friends. So today let us understand what is NFS, why it is used, what is the purpose of uh, developing this software. So as you can see that uh, NFS is network file system. It is developed for sharing files and folders between Linux or Unix systems. And it is it was developed by the Sun Microsystems in 1980. So what it does, it allows you to mount your local file system. Like if you have made it upon server and uh, whatever your local file system will be there. So on the network, you can give access to the remote host to interact with them as they are mounted locally on their same system. So what the remote host will understand that the uh, remote files actually the files on the system which is mounted so and shared with them will be on their local system and they can use just like their normal local system files will be there so it provide a local access to the remote files actually so this is developed on the client server architecture that one will be the server and another will be the client and client will access the server file systems there so there is no and not necessary that both system client and server have Linux or Unix. So it will be shared between Unix and Linux. I mean, it, one server will be on the Unix and client will be the Linux one. So you can share it like that also. The main purpose was to make it uh, your uh, storage centralized storage where you can have the uh, your files and repositories there and you can share those with your client actually. So this is the reason. So let understand more on it. So what's through graphical that? For example, you can see here, like we have uh, three client: one, two, and three. So what is happening? For example, you have one uh, 10 GB file, and the same file being used by client two also and client three also. So what it needed? It needed storage right so in that case all three servers will require 10 10 gb like for example you have a file of 10 gb so all system will require 10 gb space it means the total will require 30 gb for three but this is the case when you have a very small organization but what about the big organization like this one it has a 500 client so if you have the 500 systems in your organization and they are using instead of 10 gb they are using the 100 gb file then to the if you are copying the same file to all 500 clients then how much space you required you required 50 kgb space it's too much because the space is not so cheap actually it's uh, very costly if you will go with it so only 100 GB file required a 50 kgb space this was this is a uh, so what uh, they did what this NFS do is that you can place this on the server that is like 10 GB were using so you can put it on 10 GBs on the server that is NFS server and share with your client client 1 client 2 client 3 so you what you required you required only 10 gb space so with the same with the 100 client also so you required a 10 gb space 100 gb space in that case so this is what it does it will be a nfs client and uh, this is a nfs server and we have the three clients here so we can share it in, uh, like uh, we can share this with the servers okay and we can share with the client too we can share with the client 3 also so in that case what will it will do it it will the client 1 client 2 client 3 they will just uh, use these files as they are in their local system but the files will be residing in this NFS server only. Yeah, there will be some lagging will be there because of the bandwidth uh, on your network. So, but irrespective of that, uh, the storage what you will save it. 
that will be much better and I don't think it will be much a difference or very in seconds delay you will feel it so this is the main purpose actually to make a central repository and uh, that can be shareable to the different clients and you can save the storage so in our lab now so for what we required for here I have the two systems like uh, you can see that I have IP server desktop this will be uh, work as uh, NFS server and uh, we can take a client like remand will be there so we will take it, it as a remand tag so we will see that how we can share it what we require and uh, how we can make a folder and we will share it with your client there so this is our server so for the to make it a server actually first what we have to do it we have to install the rfs server here and uh, so just let uh, install the server <coughs> so what we have to do we have to write uh, yum install nfs pivotage so right now i'm using uh, red hat uh, linux 8 so in this one you just required the nfs utils but if you will go with the previous versions maybe you require some di different uh, libraries to be installed so let's check this one i think it will say that it has already been there because uh, i have already installed this thing it is in my server here so there is no need for me to update it so this is the only thing like nfs utils you require to make it a server mostly uh, this comes uh, you do not have to install it if you are using red hat linux 8 it uh, comes with the bundle already installed so you do not require it to be installed there what you can do you can just uh, so let's check it's already been there actually in, in my system so let's check it so if it has been there or status nfs so yeah it is already been there and it is active there so what you have to do once you will install it through this uh, em install uh, nfs utils you just start it it is already in my in case it is already been started if uh, required let's stop it ctl stop nfs server okay let's check the status again okay it is not running now so what we will do it we will start it stem ctl start nfs server let's start it let's check it status okay fine so but this is started uh, to if we require that after reboot also it will start the system will start the server we have to make it enable there let's enable it nfs server so once it will reboot then also they have a start automatically so we do not require to change it we do not have to restart it so this is the first thing that we have to run this nfs server to be started there so it's running now the second step what we have to do it we have to add it the export file so export file will be you can do whatever the folder let's check whether we have what are the folders we have right now so fine let's go with the root one let's go with the root one what in root we have okay so in root we have this one just see so we have one folder like a shared one right so we will share this folder 
let's see if what's there actually in shared folder we have two files test one and test uh, test and test one files we have so you can see that this test file is with the root permission root uh, you belong to the root user and the group is also root and uh, for the test one i have put it like nobody here and group is also nobody we will talk about this nobody that what it is and how it behave so right now let's uh, share this folder so let's uh, if you will go to the client and you will write the app okay, to see what are the mounted files we have right now so you can see that we do not have any shared files with it we have not mounted any shared folder all right nothing is here so what we, our aim is we will share this share folder right so to check whether anything been shared right now to the uh, client host we can use show mount minus e so right now this uh, already been shared here right so this is shared with uh, this ip so what this is what our ip is let's check ip of it config so here is our ip so it is shared with this our client here let's check it that how we have done so so where we have defined this configuration that this home will be shared and this folder will be shared with this ip so this file exists into atc export file so this is the file where we have defined it here so whatever the folders you have to add for example if you have some new folder and you have to share it with your client host so you can write like uh, nfs uh, nfs new folder folder and uh, here you can define the ip address for example you can define 192 you can define 192.168.253.125 something like that A specific IP address if you have to define you can define it like this or uh, if you have to do, uh, give permission access to uh, all the clients so you can use the star asterisk also so you can use the asterisk for this and uh, even you can define the domain name like for example you can put it like a uh, street dot example dot com so you can give access and the domain name or ip address you can define it so <clears throat> what i did it i already had defined it here shared folder that is required to be shared with this ip address and here is the permission so permission of the client actually that uh, how client can access it you can define here like read only also ro or you can define it the rw read and write then we can define this sync syncing mean that uh, whenever you are working on some file uh, shared with you by your nfs server or the repository so when you do the commit you will save it so it will sync between the server and the client and there is one more you can define it if you like that will be a no root squash so this is the another we will talk this uh, about this uh, parameter that uh, why we define it right now we don't need it so we will discuss this that how why we will require this parameter so 
so this is way you can define your export file so once the export file been created you just save it this file saved so show mount minus e so this is already been shared with it so but once uh, you but uh, once you will have this uh, export file created or you have added this file what you have to do you have to put it export fs minus r reload the file so what the r will do it will reload the file <coughs> so export fs what it will do it will export your whatever the share folder you have done it it will put it into the exporting of those files there there are other options for the export fs like you can see the export fs version you can check it that which versions will be there like uh, it is a uh, shared folder will be there they sync hide no subtree check so these are the options you can check it that what no all is squash root is squash read write so this is all you can define it here and uh, what else? so if you want to see that uh, export fs minus a if you are using it means that whatever the files will be there and the uh, subdirectories will be there all will be exported to it so right now we have exported it and it we have shared it with our client that is 192.168.253.130 but uh, if we will see here it's not been like come to the client now this is client let's check it again so df minus yeah so you can see that I do not have any file system like that <coughs> because the thing is we have not mounted yet but if you want to check it that what server has shared with, with us you can check it like this show mount minus e and put the IP address of the server 192.168.253.128 so 128 is the IP address of my NFS server you can check it config so this is the IP address so we can give this IP address and check it what they have shared with us so they have shared with us this one shared folder and this is for all this is also we can mount it mean home and shared both so let's check it uh, that uh, if you will go we have the folder here I have already created one folder minus NFS shared so there is nothing is there if you can see in this file in the, our local this is the local folder right so NFS shared so in this there is no file here so let's mount it mount We define it 192 the IP address of the server 1253.128 and it will be a shared folder and where we have to mount it nfs dot shared fine so it has been mounted let's check let's check whether in this folder I am getting something or not okay fine so you can see that whatever the files of that server was there okay, here let's check it again we have shared folder here and there are two files All right test and test one so you can see that in client also it will showing the same test and test one mean it been shared with the client now and client can check it read it write it and other things can do right okay fine so this is how you can uh, access to the client now let's do something um, 
let's try to read the files what's here cat let's go inside it cd nfs shared fine now I'll try to read this cat test dot test txt okay fine so the file is here test but it belongs to the root right so I'm also inclined you can see that uh, I have been logged in as a root here so let me try to update this so let's update this file vi test.txt right let me add something more here file being updated from the client fine let's save this file okay fine so I have been able to save this file you can see here all right so let's check on the server whether the file been updated there or not cat test.txt I'm in the root folder right now shared cat test.txt so you can see that file has been updated from the client why because we have given the read write permission to it so that's why they are able to update this file here now try to what we will do let's create a one new file on the server uh, touch make it a new file dot txt fine right so here we got a new file right and uh, it has read write permission to the root only right and read and read file or option with the other so let's try to update this file first check it whether it is so you can see that we do not have to update or we do not have to sync it's already whenever the files will be there it will be visible to you now so here the new file is visible to you it's available to you so uh, let's uh, update this file new file update it this this file updated from the client let's see this file good so this file has been updated cat new file fine let's check on this one cat new file so this file is also updated with the client from the client let me create a file on this file server now for like uh, touch client file let's put it like this I'm just trying to create a file on the server now right and I'm able to so you can see one thing <clears throat> we have created the client file on the server right but I was the root I am logging on the client side I am logging as a root here but on the server side if you will see it has created a file client file but with the username nobody and the group is also nobody 
so what does it do actually so if client request coming from the root login also it will not take it as a root of this server it will take it as a normal user and named it as nobody the reason is of the security reason so that this user cannot as a root touch or go through or walk through to other file systems so as a security reason they take it as a nobody only so wherever you are you're just having the file and you will create it it will be named as a nobody only so you can see they are all nobody here so these are the users of the client actually that is the nfs uh, server client will define it whenever you are connect contacting it <clears throat> but sometimes because it's a normal user right but sometimes we require the permission of as a root that client can work on this uh, server with the root permissions so how we'll do that so the this is how we'll do as i told you here if you will see that uh, <clears throat> what we did it uh, in uh, etc go into the export again file and you have seen that we have shared 192 this we have shared it here but here sync we have done it so by default it will take it as a nobody but if you want that it should be taken as a root only instead of the nobody so what we will do it we have to write it let's update it and check it we have to write no root squash and save it and for this we have to export fs then r we have to reload this again <clears throat> let's check it again so we have right now this let's create a new file touch client file one dot txt Fine. So you have seen that what I did it, I just created a new file with the client file one dot txt. But this time it has not taken as a root. Nobody, it has taken as a root because now we have squash it. We have says that don't take it as a normal user. Take it as a root one, and we required a root permissions. So that's why we have given a root here now. So this is how guys you can uh, share it and <coughs> you can mount it here but uh, you have to keep uh, one thing more I really forget to tell you in the starting uh, to get it uh, what it use actually it use uh, NFS protocol it's use RPC bind and mount the so you have to take care of the firewall on the server so let's check firewall command dot let's check what is been open It's a mistake. I forgot to write the E. <clears throat> okay, one well, just check it. So you can see here I have already opened this uh, 
Moundy, Hanifes, and the RPC Byte. So this port should be open to communicate with the client. If it's not open, you can open it. Clear. You can uh, open like a firewall, CMD, permanent, add service, and you can define this service. You can define service in a uh, braces also, like uh, NFS, RPC, bind, and mounty. My bad. Okay, fine. So it's saying is already enabled actually. So because it's already been enabled, so before communicating, you have to open the firewall here. And uh, now here, if you can see, we have mounted. Let's check it clear on the client side if you will see it what we will just checking whatever the mounts are there so you can see here it is mounted here all right so we have already mounted with this uh, server they have shared it this and we mounted to this one but once you will reboot your system this mount will not be available to you so to make it a permanent so that next time your system reboot it will be available to your mount so what you have to do it so what you have to do it you have to just first unmount it I'm already into this shared folder. Let me come out from this. Fine, let me check it if it is there. So now it's not been there. So we have to update a file that is called FS tab. So we have to go into the FS tab. Go into the FS tab and you have to do this entry here if you can see that i have done it the entry 192.168.128 shared and to be mounted on this folder so you have to define this nfs type we have to define defaults and the permission and timing so we i have defined this entry you have to add this entry there in the fs tab so next time when your system reboot this uh, mount will be available to you so let's mount here again mount because i have unmounted here let's reboot it and check it whether it's available or not because i have unmounted here So I lost the connection because I rebooted it. <coughs> okay, fine. So you can see that it's connected now. And uh, let's check it whether our shared folder is available or it's mounted or not. So if you can see df minus kh. Well, so you can see friends that it is already the shared folder from the NS driver is been shared with this and it's mounted automatically because we have defined it in FS tab there so I hope that you would have liked these videos if you have any question just let me know 
most welcome all your comments and your suggestions and if you like my videos subscribe for it and there are lots more videos to come and definitely i will uh, if uh, you feel that uh, anything more you require to know about this nfs servers other things or anything missing or you are facing any problem you are most welcome to contact me thank you friends thank you very much